As we all adjust to the new reality of COVID-19, we know that education at home is going to be an ongoing concern. And joining me now is Nancy, uh, an expert on uh, homeschooling. Welcome, Nancy. Thanks for having me. All right. So first of all, let's introduce yourself uh, to the viewers and your background in education. Sure. So Nancy McIntyre, I work with the Catholic District School Board in Eastern Ontario. My current role is Principal of Curriculum. Um, what's great about this role is I get to work with all the schools across the board, so I get to see the great things happening. Um, as well, I'm a mom of three, and two of my kids are in school, so I'm getting to experience this online journey uh, with a personal perspective as well. That's excellent. Now, so let's uh, move on to some tips that uh, you have to maximize uh, education at home and parents that are, that are adapting to this online learning. What is your advice to them and their, their students? Okay, so I'm going to share four tips that I think are important. Uh, the first tip, start simple. Uh, I think it's an important tip for our families to start with is knowing that you don't need to replicate school, especially if this is causing any stress to you or your family. The well-being of our families is of most importance. So just focus on supporting skills that are key to your child's future success, um, such as creativity, where we're encouraging our kids to use their imagination, ask questions, problem solve, really stick with the problem. Communication skills, where children are sharing ideas and listening to each other. And uh, healthy living, really supporting our kids in their mental and physical health. We really do trust that our parents know what's best for their kids. So we know that them deciding together a direction and a pace that works for everyone in the house is probably what's best. A uh, second tip that I wanted to share is just daily reflection, taking um, time maybe to start and end the day in prayer. Uh, prayer, starting the day in prayer as a family can really set the tone for the day. It helps students um, be calm and really provides opportunities for them to express their feelings. Ending the day in prayer is a way for them to take time as a family to offer gratitude and uh, really pray for those in need, especially during this time. I also wanted to share that we have some resources that are available through School Mental Health Ontario. So if parents are having any concerns or wondering how they can support um, their children with mental health, we do have a, a lot of resources on our board website. Um, as a board, we also have supports for our students and for our parents. And I know that our school support staff are working diligently to ensure that our families are connected to these resources. A third tip that I wanted to share was stay connected. We really do miss our students, and I know that our staff are putting forth every effort to stay connected um, and staying connected with their schools across the board. I'm seeing a lot of things happening on social media as well as in the online classrooms. Um, we have schools who start the day at 9 o'clock online, maybe through Instagram, and they're doing a daily prayer. Um, they're offering a day's challenge for students as well as uh, some DPA physical activity. So daily physical activity where they're starting with a dance party, getting the kids moving. And there's been a lot of positive feedback of how um, that uh, parents love that that starts the day for their kids and gets things going in the household. We have some schools that are doing um, spirit weeks as well as read out loud. So lots of great things happening. So what I say to our students and their families is just ensure you're following um, your school's social media and checking out the school webpage. And the last tip that I wanted to share is just ask questions. Uh, we really want our parents and guardians to know that they are not alone in this and they can reach out to their classroom teachers, their school principals. We have our board ICT support and each other. We are a community and we are in this together. So don't be afraid to ask questions because really the question that you you have may help us to support other families who are having those same challenges. So those are four really important tips that I think will help. And Nancy, when you talk about, uh, you know, some of those staying connected with, with schools, uh, and it, it kind of brings a, a little bit of normalcy, uh, but at the same time, you did say in your, in your very first tip that you don't have to replicate a school day. So that leads me perfectly into the next question, which is just uh, in terms of, of structuring your day, lunches, recesses, breaks, things like that, what's your advice in terms of that? Um, well, we know it's not the same as being at school, but uh, our hope is to continue the student learning and ensuring that students are moving forward in their understanding of grade level curriculum. Uh, we understand it can look different for each of our families, so hopefully some of the tips mentioned can help. A reminder, I have to remind myself often too, is just be patient and kind with yourselves. We know you're doing the very best to support your children in every way during this challenging time. So um, some things that you're talking about as far as keeping with the schedule, take frequent breaks. Children and young adults um, need balance uh, with their school day. So recreational activities, nutritional breaks, 
ensuring there's a routine. Um, we know that sharing close living arrangements can be difficult sometimes when you're trying to do work as well. So if you have a schedule for your children where one's online while the other one's having a break time and just take learning outside, there's uh, some of the great learning does happen outdoors. Absolutely. And just to finish off, Nancy, how do you, uh, some of those actually sound like great tips for this next question, but how do you keep children engaged and interested? Okay, so um, we really want to uh, reiterate here how we know that student success uh, only happens when students are engaged. So um, earlier this year, we had our teachers uh, working with online math programs through Marion Small, and uh, we had other schools that were using Zorbits and Dreambox. So those are game-based uh, math programs where students are having fun and they're moving uh, forward in their proficiency in math. So these, um, we've been working with these companies during um, this online learning, and we're now able to provide these these online games to all of our elementary students. So if parents are interested in getting started with that, they can go onto our board website. There's some instructions there, or they can reach out to their child's math teacher. And in regards to Literacy, we have an awesome digital library. It's called Sora. Um, so it's K to 12, so kindergarten to grade 12. It's uh, for all levels and interests. Uh, we have graphic novels and audio books. Definitely something there for every uh, for anyone. So they can just go to mycdsbo.com to access that digital library. Excellent. Well, Nancy, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me and sharing these tips for parents uh, as we know that they, that both them and their children are adapting to this new reality. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And now, here's the next installment of our series with the Seaway Valley Community Health Centre, where registered dietitians Joelle and Lindsay provide some grocery shopping tips. Hi everyone, my name is Joelle and this is my colleague Lindsay, and we are both registered dietitians at the Seaway Valley Community Health Centre. So today we really want to talk about how we can take care of ourselves during this time. There's a lot of information going out there telling us what we should be eating and what we should be doing. So really, we wanted to take the time to talk to you about how is food making you feel today? I'm giving you some tips and tricks on how we can take care of our bodies and our minds during this time. So it's okay if you are using food as a coping mechanism during this time. Eating is a behavior that will absolutely look different for everyone, especially right now. So it's important to take the time to check in with yourself and ask, how is food making me feel today? Is it adding to my stress or my anxiety? Um, am I feeling guilty about my food choices? Am I nourishing my body or restricting food? Some of these statements may sound familiar to you and we want you to know that that is okay and that your feelings are completely valid because you're not alone. You have permission to listen to your body, to nourish your body and to give it what it needs to feel good in this, in this moment and at, at that time. So because all of this may be causing you more stress or more anxiety, you may be finding yourself overeating at times and that's okay and completely normal. You may also find yourself under eating at times because food is less accessible and less available to you than it usually is. Your routine has also likely been disrupted. So you may not have um, access to food. Like we mentioned, you may be at home for longer periods of time. You may be working from home and or with children, um, baking more often to pass the time, having different cravings, moving less because we're asked to stay at home, um, eating more from canned foods or frozen foods. So I'll let my colleague Lindsay kind of discuss some more mindful eating tips that may be helpful in order to guide you and navigating those feelings around food. Yeah, so thank you, Joelle. Um, and to start off, I just want to briefly explain what we mean when we say mindful eating. So mindful 
think is, you know, being aware of what you're eating, being aware and present for that eating experience, and really just letting go of any judgments that you might have about the foods that you um, choose to eat and, you know, the eating experience in general. So some things that you can do um, to take a more mindful approach to eating during this time could be as simple as just sticking to your regular eating schedule. So you might be working from home, you might be off work, um, you might be spending more time at home with your children. Um, as Joelle mentioned, your routine is probably looking a little different than it usually does. So this might mean that you might find yourself snacking more often, um, you know, food is more available, you might be trying to pass the time, or it might mean that you're busier than usual and going longer periods of time without eating. So a lot of people really like to have that structure or that routine in their lives. And so sticking to that regular eating schedule can be really helpful for that. So even if other aspects of your normal routine are disrupted, you can bring in that normal eating routine and have that schedule back in your life. So for example, um, if you're used to having an afternoon snack at work, why not have it at home too? So that might look like, you know, every afternoon around 3 p.m. just checking in with yourself and asking yourself, am I hungry? Could I use a snack right now? How are my energy levels? Um, and, you know, if the answer is yes, then go ahead and have a snack. That might help. Um, it might help you kind of take you through till supper time, or it can help you stay in tune with your body's normal hunger cues and be able to give your body what it needs. Another thing you can do is if you're someone who normally meal plans or prepares food in advance for the week, keep doing that. Even though your week might look a little bit different than it usually does, by having that game plan and going into the week prepared, um, you're able to you know, have food ready, have food available, when hunger strikes. So if you're at home with your children um, and you're not used to really having to feed them throughout the entire day, um, every single day. So by having that game plan, you might have lower stress levels because you have food ready, you have food prepared, you have a game plan, um, and you're able to kind of feed them when they're hungry as well as yourself. So if that afternoon snack um, is needed, it's not really stressful because you have something in the fridge ready to go. Another thing that you can do is just sit down at the table and eat your meal. So if you're at home with your family um, or, or you know, at home with friends, this might be a little bit easier for you to come together at the table and sit down and share a meal together. Um, but if you're alone, it might be a little bit harder. So something you can do if you're at home alone is you know, enjoy a meal with someone virtually. So use video chat, um, your phone, your tablet, your laptop. You can still look up at the table and have someone there with you. So that way you're able to really enjoy the experience and share it with someone. If you don't have access to this, something else you can do is um, set a place for yourself at the table um, light a candle, do something that really allows you to sit down and enjoy that meal. Um, you can even change the setting. So as the weather gets warmer, uh, sitting out on your deck or your patio and enjoying a meal out there, opening the windows and having the fresh air come in, anything that really helps you enjoy that eating experience. The last thing on our list is to try and enjoy the entire food experience. So with our busy lifestyles, we're not normally able to enjoy cooking and baking as much as we might like to. It might seem like more of a chore, but right now, a lot of us are getting back into the kitchen and spending more time there, baking and cooking, um, which might lead to a little bit more anxiety uh, or stress because we might find ourselves eating more baked goods than usual. Um, so we'd like you to kind of reflect and use this time to kind of look at the experience, reflect on it, and you know, think, how is it making you feel? So think about baking, you know, how is it making you feel? Is it calming, distracting, fun? Are you involving your children and creating memories, teaching them life skills? Um, so this reflection can really help you enjoy the entire experience, but also enjoy the food even more because you're able to appreciate the time and the effort that went into um, the entire process. So overall, this is the information that we wanted to bring to you today to help you get through this time at home. Nutrition is very important, but it's only one part of the puzzle. So it's really important to remember to be kind to each other, but also to be kind to ourselves. 
So hopefully everyone is staying at home if able, um, staying safe, washing your hands. If you feel like you're overwhelmed or requiring additional support or resources during this time, you can visit our website or our Facebook page where we have a list of different resources and services available during this COVID-19 outbreak. And if you'd like more nutrition guidance, feel free to check in with myself or Joelle. Again, we're the registered dietitians with Seaway Valley Community Health Center, and you can do this by calling our center. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you.